Let's first take you through the big result from late last night uh, in five-time champions Brazil failed to win their opening match at the World Cup for the first time in 40 years as they were held to a 1-1 draw by Switzerland in Group E. Uh, you know, a lot of expectation around Brazil, as is generally the case uh, at a, a major tournament, and you really felt like they needed that big, uh, you know, convincing sort of performance at the start of the campaign just to get, you know, the fans on their side, the camp perhaps stop talking about that 7-1 result from four years ago. It wasn't a great performance though, was it? No, it wasn't. Uh, sometimes you have to give credit to the opposition. I think, obviously, after 20 minutes and Coutinho scoring that wonder strike, you thought, here we go, this is what Brazil's promised. They've pres promised some flair and some attacking football. And it just didn't quite happen. But sometimes, like I said, Switzerland, they pressed quite well. You know, they were at it, they were intense. And at the end of the day, they're ranked sixth in the world. You know, they've been ranked low, lowly now for three or four years and everyone's been thinking, why? Why are they so low? And I think yesterday they probably showed just why they are ranked sixth because, you know, they're, they're serious contenders to get out of the group. Uh, just to sort of speak about what Switzerland did uh, in this match, because like you mentioned, for 20 minutes Brazil seemed to be going uh, quite well. They had a few early chances. Uh, uh, but after that Coutinho goal, the intensity just seemed to drop a little bit. And uh, it wasn't as if Switzerland was sitting back, were they? They had 45% of the ball. Yeah, I mean, they are a, a possession-based side normally. Uh, they set up with three at the back to give them the, the over the over numbers in the midfield, if you like, five across the middle so they can outplay people and, and outnumber people across the, the middle of the park. They like to keep the ball. So they, they were never going to keep the ball for you know, the majority of the possession against Brazil because Brazil is so good. But it just shows with them having almost 50% of possession that they are a decent you know, possession-based side. And, and also off the ball, they worked very hard. You know, it was high press. Everybody looked energetic. Everybody looked fit. And they kept it going for 95 minutes. They, they didn't take the foot off the pedal once. Uh, a lot of spotlight, uh, of course, on Neymar going into this match, coming back from an injury. Uh, he was uh, fit enough to start, uh, uh, but couldn't really impose himself uh, on the game, did he? Switzerland did a, a, a great job of keeping him quiet. They did, um, and it was a frustrating night for Neymar. Um, physically, he's not the strongest. You know, he's quite slight. He's still got to try and add that to his game a little bit. He's not, he's not the oldest. But he did get rough, roughed up, um, you know, two or three times. He was outnumbered every time he got the ball. There was there was two or three players all over him. Obviously, they were physical. They weren't scared to foul him. Could have maybe got a little bit more protection off the referee with one or two early bookings. Mm. But once the referee lets one go, then obviously the Switzerland players were all over him. I think he, he was fouled ten times in the game, which yeah. is, is quite a lot. He was dispossessed uh, nine times as well, and uh, uh, a lot of that was down to Valon Barami uh, in the middle of uh, Switzerland's defence. Was he uh, the standout player for you, even though he was subbed off uh, on 70, 72 minutes? Yeah, I mean, he, he had a lot of the ball. Um, you know, he's, he's, we know he likes to play on the ball, he likes to come out with it at the back and, and make combination passes, but, and he was organising them. But like we said, to, to lose the ball nine times, to, to be fouled ten, you know, obviously adding that up, there's 19 times there, there's a, there's a stop of possession. And, and if we look at the, the way it was set up, if you like, obviously we knew Brazil were going to be in a 4-3-3 system, if you like. Mm. Um, Switzerland were always going to go with three at the back. And the way that the, the Brazilians lined up, they had obviously C Casemiro at the, at the bottom of the three, um, Paulinho to the, to the right. And obviously Coutinho, which was brave to play him on, on the left-hand side of midfield, providing a pass. But it was all about Neymar. Uh, Neymar was the one that was, was trying to get into these positions. But wherever he roamed in these kind of positions, he got the ball. You would see at times the first defender would go and press him. He would get covered by a, a cover in midfield. And you also had the striker back tackling as well. And, and many occasions you would see that. And, and the, if, he, if he managed to, to maybe possibly skip past one, all of a sudden, he was, he was faced by another one. You'd have a, a centre-half coming up, and they really did. You, you could see it was a game plan. Stop Neymar, they was thinking, and you stop Brazil. And for me, Neymar should have learned a little bit from that. You know, he, he, he took the, the bull by the horns every time. He tried to beat two or three players where he may have just been able to pop it off early one touch, and they could have recycled the ball out the other side and, and maybe got an overload. So I think he needs to learn a bit. It's, it's not all about him. You know, mm. he's in a team, and sometimes if teams are going to double up, treble up, then just give it to somebody else and, and let us do some damage elsewhere because, you know, sometimes you have to sacrifice yourself. Uh, Gabriel Jesus, obviously, has had a great season uh, for Manchester City coming into this World Cup. He struggled to get involved in this uh, game, didn't he? had uh, very few touches, uh, had to sort of move deep a lot to try and get the ball. Yeah, and I think that was also, you know, collective part of Neymar keeping hold of the ball. Uh, Jesus is fantastic, you know, if, if we look at him in these kind of positions. J Jesus is really good at running down the sides of the centre-halves. You know, he's very fast. 
and, and to, to go into these kind of positions, it needs, it needs feeding. And, and that was the idea of Coutinho on the side. When Jesus makes these kind of runs, Coutinho is the one that's supposed to get onto the ball and the one that's supposed to provide the long passes for Jesus, whether it's, whether it's a long one down the side and, and looking for his run. But like I say, because the ball went into Neymar so many times, hmm. he was neglected a little bit and they didn't play to his strengths. OK, uh, just one final thought. Uh, and this is on the equalising goal uh, uh, from Switzerland. You weren't very happy with the way Brazil had set up to mark that corner, were you? Can you tell us why? Yeah, I mean, I'm not a fan of zonal marking. And you could see quite clearly the Brazilian players. You know, it, it, it's hard to maybe demonstrate on a board, but there's four players that are just inside the six-yard box and the mm. marking space. Uh, that only works if you've got four defenders that are really committed at attacking the ball, maybe having a run coming out of their zone. And what they did was allow Zuba to get in between them. He got a little bit of a run, which means your trajectory is a little bit higher. You can jump a little bit higher. Yes, he did nudge him a little bit, possibly a VAR, but the momentum of his run for me, always gives the attacker the chance. I, I'm a big believer that defenders have to get body contact. If you get body contact against somebody, they can't get the run on you, and it's more of a contest, more physical. So I think, that, that, that for me, the setup I don't like. <laughs>